Isa, what do you got here? Uh, need to write a comp package to owner of three person. I believe I already answered this, uh, but I'm I like this question, and I think you have some new color here. Okay, Isa's a boot camper. Uh, need to write a comp package proposal to owner of three person company. I will be a W two. Oh, so it's changed. A W two base. Plus commission, do I pad it? And is there a psychology when writing it? Yes. Okay. Isa, if you have not seen, if you have not seen the advanced negotiation tactics session in your boot camp in module five, so go into your main boot camp product, job search coaching product, module five. There's a main session on salary negotiation. There's a case study on salary negotiation. There's other things, how to handle multiple job offers. And there's another session on advanced negotiation tactics. On the advanced negotiation tactics, what you're going to do is you're going to create a template, a grid of sorts. And you're going to talk about what your objectives and value is that you're going to contribute, the activities it's going to take in order to achieve them. And then you're going to look at what it is that you're actually going to do, what the results will likely be. You're going to agree to the results and the value of the results. You you put the word psychology in there. The biggest mistake that 99.9% of people make when they're negotiating is they're trying to negotiate based on relative numbers that have absolutely nothing to do with what they're going to contribute. Well, the market says, you know, that job pays 100. I don't care what the market says. Here's how I value it. My eye as an employer is on what? The cost. Your job as a seller is to do what? Get these eyes off that cost and onto what? The value. Get me on the dollars I'm going to get. Because right now, I think you cost me whatever, 100000 That's all I can see. You all, you want to buy my job search program? What do you look at? How much is it going to cost me? Instead of how much am I losing every day? How much faster am I going to find my job? How much more am I going to get paid? Right? All of a sudden, the cost isn't my focal point. It's the value, Right? what my life is going to be like, how much I'm going to earn. You're, you're trying to move their eyes off your cost, your salary, your commissions, and onto if I do X, you get Y, I get Z, right, kind of thing. So you're going to pay me 2% of all the money I bring in. You get $2 million. I get 40 grand. Is different than I want 40 grand. Who's tracking with this? Do you see the difference? Your focal point and what you're doing, we call this framing. So that's a proper term, psychological proper term, framing, getting somebody to look at something the way you want them to look at it, hopefully not in a manipulative way. This is for their benefit, right? You need to have context around the fact that you're going to make $2 million and I'm only going to get 40000 of that. Seems like a damn good deal, right? Kind of thing. But if you're trying to argue that I want 100 plus the 40, it just sounds like 140,000 to me. Do you guys get this? Can I get a hey in the chat? This is one of the biggest mistakes that y'all make when you're trying to negotiate your salary because you're trying to negotiate it based on two things, what you think you should be paid and what you want to be paid or what you think the market's pay is or what you think is fair. And the F word, fair, is the worst word to ever use in a negotiation. Because if you say something like, I think this is fair, you're calling me unfair, right? I'm not, I'm not being fair. So, so you got to think about this when you're, when you're negotiating. So when you, when you think about what you want to pay, Issa, I go through all this for you in that session and how to make it look. And then you go and you talk to your boss and you say, I put together this sheet of what you want me to do, what I'm going to accomplish, what it's going to mean to you, and then we're going to agree on how much you're going to pay me in base and in commissions. I guarantee you, when you show, because you need to translate for them, if I'm getting X commissions and you're giving me a percentage or a flat amount or a whatever, or laddered or whatever it is, that means I made you X. You're giving me a fraction of that. 
So two million to forty thousand is way different than oh man, I got to give you two percent. That's a lot of money, right? Okay, Isa, I hope that helped. That's get their head off, get their eyeballs off your cost. What's the first thing you do when you join one of my programs? Swipe the card, right? Hurts. I know it hurts. I want you to think of it as an investment. What's the first thing an employer does when they hire somebody? They start paying them. Two weeks later, one month later, hurts. It hurts, right? Because you haven't contributed the value yet. You're welcome. Uh, interviewers focusing on my employment periods and moved on due to toxic settings and saying that job applicants overvalue themselves. Thoughts. And then saying that job applicants overvalue themselves, I don't know what makes them say that. Let's go back to an answer I gave earlier in the, uh, in the, in the, in the talk here today is what's your best friend? On the feedback one that Mohit asked us, right? It is, it, why do you think what you think? What makes you think applicants overvalue themselves? Oh, well, they want so much money, and I don't think that we should pay them so much money. So hold on. Okay, so hang on. Um, perhaps, now, we're off the script for a second. You need to ascertain whether that employer is just cheap, or what are you willing to pay for? I wouldn't, I wouldn't, if somebody said to me, Andy, applicants overvalue themselves. My response would be, what makes you think that? Okay, wait, and they, uh, then there would be another question. The next question is the home run question. What makes you think that? What do you consider to be worth this much money? What skills would an employee have? Why are, they, why are you going to ask them that? Because the next thing I'm going to tell them is how I have all those, right? You... The gap between what they think and what, what, what they want to pay and what you know is you're focused, I'm not saying you, but just in general, if you're focusing on what they're saying that, that, that job candidates overvalue themselves, what you have to get at isn't, well, I think that's silly. It's, okay, well, hang on. What would you value? How much would you pay for that? Have you been able to find someone with all those skills. You I wouldn't I wouldn't quit those questions until I was perfectly in checkmate position because once I understand what you expect, I'm willing to pay this if you bring me this this and this. You want to interview with me? I'll tell you that up front. I'm willing to pay more. Do you can you do all these things right now? Ready baked? Okay, can we work toward that? Then you start here. And then we go to here when you can do all these things. So that, I mean, Alyssa, this is a great, great question. This, again, going back to the salary negotiation pieces, if you can't get them to explain how they value what they value and how much they're willing to pay for that, you can't make an argument. You don't know what's up in their head. So I hope that helps. That is... That's a great question. I hope all of you think about that. That's really, sorry, my candle burnout. Um, that's really, really good. Really good.